These two robots are using gliders and Arduino boards running machine learning algorithm and in this video I want to make them race. In the last video I built this robot with the idea of making it drive autonomously in the racetrack built out of cardboard. After a lot of troubles, manual driving to collect all the necessary data for training and developing a few machine learning models, I was positively surprised with the results. The robot was driving really accurately even at high speeds. But how about making it even cooler and building another robot? This robot will be built just like the first one with ORP parts. So there was a lot of 3D printing, assembly and free screws involved, but it was all super easy. And most importantly, you can find all the parts for this robot and other robots for free at openroboticplatform.com. I already have a second LiDAR for this robot. Previously, I used a LiDAR from FreeEye Robotics. It was called Delta 2i. It's not a very popular model and I don't think it's available anymore, but this time I'm going to use RP LiDAR, which is probably the most popular LiDAR among hobbies right now. But there is a problem, I have no idea how to use it with the Arduino. I even had problems to connect it to the Arduino. Of course, you can easily find the pinout in the documentation. The documentation is not really that easy to find, but if you dig a bit, you can find it on the internet. But then the connector is super small and you cannot really fit any cables into the connector. I don't have any kind of connectors cables that would work with that. So I decided to do something that I really don't like to do and that is cut off the connector and just solder the cables, breadboard cables so that I can easily connect it to the Arduino. I do not recommend doing that and modifying the original part because then it's hard to put it all together and use it in other projects. But sometimes that's what you have to do and overthinking it, trying to find online the perfect connector, waiting for shipping it to you, it all takes a lot of time. So sometimes just doing the easiest way possible is the best way you can do it. I found two Arduino libraries for RP LiDAR and since the documentation wasn't really detailed, I had to get one of them working. The first one wasn't working at all, it wasn't even close. And the second one seemed to work, but not always. And that became a huge problem that I tried to solve for like three days. The LiDAR was especially not working when I connected it to the rest of the robot, like the motors and everything. So an obvious idea is that there is some kind of interference and noise that is disturbing the LiDAR. So I tried a lot of different ways to connect it. And in the end, after three days, it turns out that when you connect the RP LiDAR directly to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, it helps and it finally works because previously it was connected to the breadboard and then from the breadboard to the 5 volt pin. So connecting it directly to the Arduino solved everything. Remember about that. If you are going to use RP LiDAR in your Arduino projects, you may face some problems with the noise. Custom PCB would probably solve all the problems related to noise in this project and that could be a perfect transition to a sponsor of this video, but it's not because this video is not sponsored. I'm really picky when it comes to choosing sponsors for my videos and that's why most of them are not sponsored. And of course, making this project requires well, some money, a lot of time and a lot of effort. If you would like to support what I'm doing here, you can do that on my Patreon. You can check out my industry store. You can use super thanks here on YouTube, or you can just comment, like, and consider subscribing if you like my content. All the links are in the description. Thank you very much. As I mentioned, I spent three days on just getting the RP LiDAR to work and I was really close to giving up, but I didn't. And fortunately we can move on to the next step. Once the second LiDAR started to work, I noticed that the data is a lot more clear, there is less noise than with the first LiDAR, and because the library is available, it will most likely be a lot easier for beginners to start with this LiDAR. But because I developed my own way of working with the first LiDAR from FreeEye Robotics, I actually kind of prefer it, but I might be emotionally attached because I spent a lot of time, like weeks, to get this LiDAR to work with the Arduino. So yes, RP LiDAR might be easier to use, but I kind of personally prefer the LiDAR from FreeEye Robotics. That is not available anymore, so we will kind of have to go with RP LiDAR. I think this one should work. Having the other LiDAR working, I assembled the second robot and uploaded the classifier from the previous video. I just modified part of the Arduino code where it communicated with the LiDAR, but everything else was pretty much exactly the same. And it worked. It's so late that the only thing I'm thinking about right now is going to sleep, but I wouldn't be able to sleep without testing if both robots will work at the same time.
that's it for today. And I feel much better after getting some sleep. So yesterday I tried to run both robots at the same time and it was a mess, they were all over the place. It was basically like a twins simulator. Take a look at this. The play button is finally here in its place. Very cool. Thanks a lot for subscribing and if you didn't yet, consider that down below. Having both robots running and like being able to stay in the racetrack with the same program was super cool, but they were not able to race at all. That's how smart they are. The one problem that I haven't noticed in the beginning, I haven't thought about, was that it's really hard to take care of two robots at the same time, and especially the fast one. We'll have to see it how that goes and if I will be able to handle all of that myself, because it's not easy. They were running at pretty much the same speed, so it was almost impossible for them to catch up and overtake, and even when they did, they had no idea how to detect and avoid the other robot. And this problem, the problem of detection and avoiding the robot, was the biggest problem I faced when working on this video. I was pretty curious if the two lidars won't interfere with each other, and it seems not to be a problem after the test in the racetrack, uh, but the problem is that they cannot really see each other because just this tiny portion of the LiDAR is what each other LiDAR can see. The LiDARs were at the same level and there was no any kind of surface on the robots to detect the other one. I fixed that with a piece of paper and some ORP connectors. <laughs> That was pretty easy, but training the classifier to avoid the other robot wasn't that easy. To teach these two robots to race, we have to actually race them manually. One of them will be controlled by the algorithm developed in the previous video, and the other will be controlled by Mateusz, a professional go-kart driver. <laughs> 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 The plan was so simple, just let one of the robots autonomously slowly drive through the racetrack while manually controlling the other faster robot, collect all the data, train the classifier and it will all work perfectly. There is a lot of problems with this plan. Firstly, the overtaking is like such a rare event that you do it every two or three laps and it looks like noise in the data to the classifier, it is not able to train on that, it just looks at the walls. So even though I tried really hard and Mateusz helped me a lot, I knew after looking at the visualization that it's not going to work. Having even more robots drive at the same time in the racetrack wasn't realistic so it was time to simplify and I had an idea on how to turn this very dynamic problem into a partially static problem that should be much easier to solve. We built some tubes out of paper and placed them in the racetrack. That way it's kind of easy to navigate in the racetrack, only one robot is moving and not two at once, and we can collect more data on actually avoiding the obstacles. We collected the data, trained the classifier, uploaded it to the Arduino and started testing. And it didn't work as it should. It really doesn't work again. Unfortunately, I know why. We have just five of these in the racetrack, so the actual data that this thing is in front of the robot when you manually drive it is probably like 5 to 10 percent, maybe even lower than that. It's not enough to properly select the data and train the classifier. What is the solution? We need more of that. And I already have more of that. After filling the entire racetrack with paper tubes, it was more about avoiding the obstacles rather than just staying in the racetrack. Manually driving it was a challenge, but was also the last piece of hope that I will make it work. I was constantly changing the placement of paper tubes in the racetrack and as well as the shape of the racetrack to make the data more variant. Trained classifier wasn't working. Sometimes it was able to avoid the obstacles, but generally it wasn't aware of the walls. So I thought it's time to create the mega dataset. With all the datasets that I collected in this and previous video, it was over 60 megabytes of data in plain text file. 
That was the last hope for me. If the mega set wouldn't work, I had no other plan on how to tackle this problem other than creating a computer simulation that could simulate multiple robots at once. But that sounds like a lot of programming, so I wasn't really eager to do that. Fortunately, it worked and the robot was able to both stay in the racetrack and avoid the obstacles. The accuracy of the classifier was 59%, so rather low, but that was in the beginning. I was able to increase it to almost 70% by increasing the number of selected dimensions from 30 to 80. And at this stage, it was time for a serious test. I wanted to see both robots race in the racetrack and one of them overtaking the other. I didn't want it to be just a lucky move, but rather an intelligent adaptation to a constantly changing environment. And it worked. I'm really happy and it is incredibly satisfying to see your project working after spending so much time and effort on it. Of course, they are not perfect, sometimes they still do crash into each other or into the wall, but that's totally fine. But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to see them race in a bigger and more complicated racetrack with some additional obstacles built out of paper tube. That is going to be a real thing. And after plenty of time, data and trained classifiers, I achieved my goal and made the robots race. Sometimes watching these overtake maneuvers is super satisfying and there's still plenty of things to test with these kind of robots, so I'm open to your ideas in the comments.